Hello and welcome. You are watching a special coverage on Baja 2122. I have special guest with me, Mr. Saurav Mukherjee, founder and chief investment officer, Marcellus Investment Managers. Uh, welcome, Mr. Mukherjee. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. So, what are your key takeaways from the budget? Budget is being described as uh, path-breaking, as bold, as transparent. What do you have to say? I mean, look, one should always ignore the rhetoric and focus on the facts. Uh, to be fair to uh, the NDA, to the BJP, to the finance minister, this is the first time since they got elected in 2014 that the government has thrown caution to the wind and taken a fiscal gamble here. Uh, it's a brave budget, 6.8% budget deficit for the year ahead takes a lot of courage to announce. Um, and, and my reckoning is the FM has done her homework and I think she's pretty confident that the, uh, the global credit rating agencies won't be able to downgrade India. And I think that's the most interesting part of the budget. By emphasizing capital expenditure, by ex emphasizing the creation of road assets, rail assets, she's made it a very difficult for global rating agencies to take a dim view of India's credit rating. And B, she's sent a very positive message to the rest of the economy and hence the, the buoyancy in the, in the market. If I had to cast, you know, if I had to you know, compare this budget, the, the closest comparison I can see is the 2009, 2009 budget, uh, which my namesake announced uh, you know, 11 years ago. That was uh, the first budget after Lehman Brothers. That too was an expansionist budget. That too revived the economy. Uh, uh, but the difference was, Pradam Mukherjee's 2009 budget was Revex focused, NREGA focused. This budget is CapEx focused, fixed asset creation focused. And hence, I think the impacts of this budget would end up being more positive on the Indian economy than the 2009 budget, which, which actually ended up stoking inflation and resulting in the RBI having to do high rates, I think eight or nine times consecutively to get a grip on inflation. My hope is that this time around, this budget will not be inflationary, at least as much as the 2009 budget was. This investment target of 1.75 lakh crore, a little modest from the last uh, target that they had set for their board, but a broad outline has been given. This investment of uh, a couple of companies and then mm. have privatization of two PSU banks happening, one general insurance company happening. How do you see this um, figure of 1.75 crores? I mean, look, I think, as you rightly said, the number is a little underwhelming, but I think my reckoning is the reason they have, they've announced an undemanding number is to prevent the financial markets from second guessing the government. Had they announced a big number, the market could have held the government hostage. So by announcing a smaller number, I think they've given themselves uh, uh, some wriggle room. If they do BPCL, Concord, the LIC, IPO, and even one even even say just Air India, if you just add Air India in that mix, that itself should be comfortably north of uh, 1.775 lakh crores. Uh, it's not obvious to me that the, that the PSU bank privatization can be done this year because in order to do PSU bank privatization, first you have to set up the bad bank, then you have to capitalize the bad bank, then the bad bank has to buy the stressed assets from PSUs and clean up the PSU balance sheet. And only after that can you privatize the PSU banks. So my reckoning is uh, the, the, the rest of the assets barring the PSU banks are going to go on the block this year. It's a good thing. Uh, it will be great to see privatization, disinvestment gather momentum in our country. And I'm sure everybody in the, in, in the world is going to cheer uh, the first privatization wave in India after what, 20 years. You ARC AMC for for the bad bank. For, uh, I, I mean to say that bad bank was in the in the news for some time now. Is this the way that um, you know that they have laid a foundation uh, for for the bad bank? So look, I mean, saying that they're going to announce a bad bank, it's good to hear. Uh, what they didn't say in the budget was how much money will the bad bank have? Where will the money come from? So I think that'll be one of the more interesting things to watch in the coming months. Um, how much capital will the bad bank have? Uh, where will the capital come from will be very interesting to see um, but yeah so I mean, if you wanted to create a bad bank uh, uh, um, 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 you had to do it through the ARC route um, the fact that they did it this time I'm a little surprised because my reckoning is the the sort of the most urgent need of the bad bank was three years ago the amount of PSU NPAs have actually has actually come off so I was a little perplexed that they did it now rather than doing it three years ago hey, but hey better late than never uh, but it was intriguing that in the budget, the FM did not mention um, how, how much money the bad bank would have. She mentioned how much money the DFI would have, but uh, not the bad bank. Voluntary scrappage policy for auto. How do you see this? 
I think that was in the works. It is voluntary, but I suppose in a country like ours, you can't make it involuntary. You'll have people on the streets uh, uh, protesting about their trucks and their cars. Indeed, my own car is 11 years old, so even I was a little apprehensive about what will happen to my car. Uh, more generally, however, if you look at it, right, uh, and we've been saying this for eight or nine months to 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 your clients that uh, auto as a sector. Uh, typically uh, has six or seven good years and those six or seven good years start with an economic recovery as it is uh, you know we've been very bullish on the auto sector we've seen we've, in several of our portfolios uh, in several of our portfolios we've had uh, Maruti Suzuki, Aisha Motors, uh, Escorts, uh, we've had auto ancillaries in several of our PMS portfolios such as PPAP, Sterling Tools, uh, 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 um, uh, Suprajit Engineering. I think auto as a sector uh, comes out of the budget smelling of roses. The, the bad, uh, the, the scrappage policy, the announcement that the government would be buying buses for tier two cities, the imposition of duties on some auto components. I think auto as a sector, auto as a sector, I think comes out as a surprise winner of the budget. Financial services sector, I think I expected it to do well out of the budget. Our kings of capital PMS was constructed actually to benefit from. Uh, uh, the, the sort of despondency in the needless despondency in the financial services sector. But I think auto emerges from the budget as the surprise winner. Affordable housing sector um, extension of SOPs for one more year, uh, is that sufficient? I'm, I'm not so sure it was done for the sufficiency or lack thereof. I think generally PM Avas has been a good program for the government. Uh, it's it's you know it's made them popular. It's genuinely led to some creation of low cost housing assets. Um, housing as a sector is what we call in economics as backward and forward linkages. Um, so it will help the the building materials sector get another another spurt of demand. Cement, building materials, paint will get another spurt of demand. Uh, you know you know country like ours, you know which is 150th in the 180 countries in the UN Human Development Index, you can never have enough affordable housing. Right, we're a poor country. But to give the government credit by extending it for another year, they've given a, a lease of life to what has been a very successful program of the government. The PM Avas Yojana I think generally has been a, a success and on, on every front. So they've given that another lease of life. Big borrowing plan for the uh, of the government. Uh, how do you expect the yields to pan out? So yields have already gone up. They've clipped up the ten-year bond yields. I think uh, the the interesting thing will be how the RBI deals with it, because. As inflation expectations build up, and my reckoning is inflation inflation expectations will build up quite nicely as the year proceeds. Um, uh, globally, commodity prices, oil prices are going up. Um, globally, bond yields have started climbing, and I think the RBI too will will have to uh, take a will have to start tightening monetary policy sooner than perhaps the financial markets would have bargained for. So, so as the RBI starts tightening monetary policy, we will see uh, I think bond yields rise by. 50 to 100 bips over the next 12 months. We started that process. I think it was a 10 bips tight uh, rise in the bond deals today. Uh, but that's to be expected. If you go through a, if you if you are if you are coming out of a slump like last year, where you floored the cost of money, the RBI, the Federal Reserve, and the RBI dropped the cost of money by two and a half percent. You flooded the system with liquidity. As the growth as the growth squeeze goes away and you normalize economic growth. You're bound to normalize the cost of money gradually over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Nothing untoward about that, nor is there anything to you know, lose sleep about. One thing, though, I will, you know, if your if your uh, clients uh, you know, are looking at this budget, don't even think about investing in companies with weak balance sheets. If you invest in companies with weak balance sheets, you're going to get slaughtered over the next two years as the interest rate cycle turns north. Uh, if you invest in companies with uh, poor pricing power. Uh, raw material cost and inflation and rising cost of money are going to crush their margins and that's that's a big trap that a lot of retail investors get into when they get excited they end up buying weak companies because the weak companies look optically cheap uh, as the rate cycle turns north over the next one to two years as inflation comes through companies with weak balance sheets and low pricing power are gonna are gonna find life getting increasingly tough 4% gain for the market today, Sensex Nifty up. Uh, which sectors are you bullish on now post-budget? We are bullish on exactly the same things pre-budget that we are bullish on post-budget. These things make no difference. You've got to realize, right? These sorts of things are good ways for you and I to talk. I get a chance to talk to you. I get a chance to talk to your clientele. But honestly, in, from an investor's perspective, you shouldn't be investing around these things. Invest in. This is a, this is a country where, as I've said over the last two years, this is a country where every sector 
one or two companies end up taking home 80 to 90 percent of the profits in the sector and look for these companies they are very visible they're very, very visible in marcellus's portfolios they're very visible in our webinars in our tv interviews and in our newsletters and those companies span various sectors we discussed some auto sector names of a couple of minutes back in banking we've got heavy exposure to hdfc bank kotak bank access bank au small finance bank indeed we have an entire pms built around high quality financial services companies including icici securities ironically right so 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 this is a country where every sector every sector including the platform on which you are you are talking end up ends up being monopolized by one or two companies invest in them and grow rich as the country develops no need to sort of you know run around speculating uh, and trying to make bets on the budget and bets on the you know our banking system policy and so on Thank you Saurav for being with us and sharing your views. Thank you so much. My pleasure to thanks for inviting me. Thanks a lot.